coming back at you with two, I would say, forces to be reckoned with in the community, folks that contribute in a number of different ways. We're talking about Angus and Steve Wilson. Angus, give us an introduction, shall you? Yeah, good, good afternoon, good evening, good night, I guess, uh, around the world. Uh, so I'm, I'm Angus Red. Um, I, uh, I've been working in uh, InfoSec for the last few years, but a different side. I've been, I'm a technical recruiter. Um, my background, I served, a, I served some time in the British military, did some tours, and then I did six years in physical security contracting, predominantly in uh, East and West Africa and in the Middle East. And then sort of my stars aligned. Um, I met with our current CEO who I work with, Marcelo um, and so, and I've been working in the cybersecurity recruiting uh, since, since then, about three years now. Beautiful. And Steve Wilson, as you're, a, you're a signature person. It doesn't seem to be a conference without a lockpicking village. How are you this morning? Yeah, yeah. I've had some sleep. Um, was up listening quite late and, and, and kind of dozed off. I've had some technical issues this morning, but, but I hope things are working now and, and you can hear me all right. Um, so far, loud and clear. Good, 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 good. Let's, let's hope it keeps going then. Also, a bit of a military background for you as well, right, Steve? Well, uh, not so much. Um, I mean, I, I was a, I was a civil servant. I worked in the Ministry of Defence, but but never never anywhere near the sharp end. You know, I was always always at the back, putting technology together. That, that you know, that the people slightly more braver than I would uh, would, would use up front. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's been an interesting one. And then then yeah, sidestepped into, into cybersecurity and been hacking things ever since. Exactly. So Angus, um, I guess we'll we'll start sort of broad overview of you know. 2019, what were your impressions of it? Was it a good year for you? Was it a challenging year? Uh, it was a, I'll be honest, it was a, it was a, it was a brutally challenging year. Okay. Um, now I, I, I mainly do, uh, I do technically advanced recruiting, uh, predominantly in the US market. So mm -hmm. we do everything from like uh, security engineering, architecture, um, consulting stuff like red teaming, DFI, or pain testing, and then we'll, we'll dabble in a bit of C-level as well. Um, it's been a it's been an interesting year. Um, you know, you, you quickly learn in this game that uh, just because clients have, have open positions doesn't mean they're actually hiring. Yeah. But uh, it's 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 ended off well. Um, I uh, I was meant to attend a summer camp, and then I had a, a bit of a a situation with a CBP, um, mm -hmm. and uh, came home straight away. Um, yeah. But no, it's been a good year and it's ended well. We had uh, B sides Cape Town yesterday. Yeah. Um, Chris Quebecer was with us. Um, a lot of great talks. Uh, we had a singer from uh, Sense Post uh, who gave us uh, gave a, a Wi-Fi hacking workshop, which was really really good. And no, it's been awesome. I think I also found my feet with the Many Hats Club this year, and um, I try to direct as many people into TMHC as I can because it's a it's an awesome group of people. It's an awesome resource, and it doesn't matter what level of of competency are in this game you know i'm i'm starting to learn a bit of uh you know forensics and OSINT and stuff and and the team on tmhc is just awesome it, it doesn't matter how 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 basic your 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 question is uh there's always someone to help out so uh no it's been it's been it's been a tricky year but it's it's ending on a on a good note which is which is which is what matters i want to talk a little bit about that angus because i think you know, I, I've talked about my sort of view of the industry, and I think that recruiters that have a bit of a technical background and can really work with the customer to get a job spec that 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 is accurate to the position that they're looking for is truly, you know, the height of the art. Um, yeah. It's, maybe, a, it's an interesting thing. It's like... Yeah. Um, so when we, when, when, when either it's a new client or an existing client comes to us and say, Hey, uh, with some clients, we'll just have like an open, open rec. So if we see a position on their website, we just message and say, Hey, can we run with this? And they say, yeah, sure. And, um, but with new clients, what usually happens is they say, Hey, we need assistance with, let's say a infrastructure security engineering, uh, position well, that yeah, yeah. And struggling with it. And the reason they pay us the, the, the dollar is, uh, because they the internal teams are struggling to find people and there's mm -hmm. a very big there's like a very big uh, competition between internal and external recruiters both both hate each other but both work together because you know for, for the common good but when we when i get a job spec i'll run through it i'll highlight some key points um 
but that's still not the position. We then do a call with a client and I speak to them and I say, what is the, what is the crux of this position? What is critical about this position? Uh, what are goes and what are no goes? And then suddenly that page and a half the description comes down to about 15 lines. And then once you start speaking to people and start sending them over to clients, that job rec suddenly becomes even smaller. And then it's at, when you start sending people in and you start getting feedback on, yes, this is exactly what you're looking for, or a little bit less this, a little bit more of this, tweak this type of tech, um, that's when you truly find out what the position is. But yeah. uh, job, recs, job recs are extremely, extremely misleading. Some of our clients have invested a lot in just job descriptions. Uh, one of our clients uh, actually has a technical writer on, on the team that writes very in-depth job descriptions. Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's like resumes. It's in the, in the eye of the beholder. Some, some job recs work and some not. And the, I guess the last thing I'll say on that is that uh, it's important people understand when they look at a job rec, it is not necessarily a uh, job rec for one position. A lot of times to get the word out more and to attract more people, job recs are sometimes very generalized. Um, so the idea is it's one job rec, but there's actually three different positions that are sort of in line with it, but there's, there's various parts. Um, and as long as you fit it by a fair amount, by about 60%, you've got a, a shot at that position. But um, yeah, it's always it's important to be careful with certain job descriptions. It's funny, isn't it? Um, just, I'll just jump in if I may. Um, yeah. I, like many people in our industry, I get bombarded with LinkedIn messages from recruiters and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And as a, a manager in, in InfoSec, I also get bombarded with <clears throat> recruiters wanting to sell, sell people to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one thing I do see that's common, and in fact, Ian, you've got a brilliant anecdote on this as well, which I'll touch on, is organizations on their own, on their own two feet, find it, in my experience, impossible to recruit InfoSec people because they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And what you often find, and this is a reference to Ian, he shared an example with the beer farmers a couple of months ago, is organizations attempt to recruit to a single position but try and recruit four or five different roles into that one position. So you'll often see that they want a threat hunter or a threat analyst or, or they want a vulnerability manager or they want a risk manager and a compliance officer and everything all rolled into one position. And unfortunately, although we may have bits of that skill in our portfolio, we're not, we're not all of those things. And I think that to me presents a real problem in recruiting into the industry. What, what are your thoughts, Angus? Yeah. So, um, the, the ironic thing, so our, our company, Variable Security, uh, has been going about five years. It's sort of recruiting a bit in the UK, and then it, it focuses more on the US and higher. Uh, um, a lot of the things that a lot of other recruiting agencies see as their unique selling points is what we use as negatives. So a lot of companies, when they want to hire a lot of people, She was like, you come to them, we can do 20 races a week uh, per, per position and uh, this, that, and the other. And in the end, that just creates more spam in the point of contact email box. That means more people have to be interviewed and less people are getting hired. And what we do is we spend a lot of time in doing research. We spend a lot of time speaking to, to, to key players in the industry to understand what we're actually looking for. Sure. Um, it's, it's very easy to do a call with someone and they talk a lot of technical jargon and you don't have a scooby-doo what they're talking about. You can, <laughs> you can get away with that to a certain degree, but I've got to the point now where I'm confident enough where someone mentions a technology that I don't, I've never heard of. Um, and what happens is we, we are very, we do very small, very niche recruiting. So for some of our best clients, we will give that but we get a near one to one interview ratio. And sometimes new clients are a bit, um, the English Afrikaans word is iffy. They're a bit like, mm, I don't know if you're the right company to work with us, but within about three to four weeks, they realize that almost everyone we're sending them is getting through interview stage one, two, three, four. And you know, they're going on site and people are getting offered. And I think that's why it's important to, to, to choose who you do your recruiting with. Um, Cause it's a, it's a, 
it's a it's a it's a it's an interesting game but it's there's a lot of there's a lot of nonsense out there um i think i get offered about three to four CISO jobs a week um, mm -hmm. because people wow. look at my job title they see the industry i'm in and they're like they they send out a mass in mail to 400 people and that's just something that we refuse to do because once again it might work for you short term but long term you're damaging your reputation Steve, um, I, oh, very okay. few companies are also something we do. We're vested. Um, I yesterday I was an organ. Yeah. No, oh, it's it's good. Uh, just continue because I was going to jump over to Steve and talk about his recruiting experiences in in a second. Yeah, definitely. You, you oh. want me to step in? <laughs> yeah, Steve, come on in. Uh, well, so I mean, I'm, I'm a terrible person to ask about this because, um, so, so, so I mean, I'm, 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 I'm world, right? I, 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 I'm not one of these people that jumps around. You know, my first job I did 11 years um, at, and I thought that was a job for life. The next job, you know, I only did five, but that's because the company went bankrupt. I've, I've been in the current role for, what's it, getting on for nine now? With no, yeah. no, no intention to move. Um, you I, get I, I, pestered I, a lot, though. Well, no, so I, I've worked out, I've managed to stop recruitment people talking to me pretty much at all. Um, via, via one clever trick, which was, you know, so I, I used to, I mean, that's everybody else, I used to, uh, you know, be harassed left, right and centre. I just point out to them that I know more people than they do, I know the rules they're recruiting for, and if I go direct, I'll get their fee paid, me as a joining bonus. So why would I, why would I want the recruiter? Um, I mean, again, I, I'm sorry, it's probably, probably going to start arguments. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, I see value in, you know, if, if you're new to the industry, if, if, if and I mean, again, this is why I get involved in things like conferences and sort of science people challenge mm -hmm. and stuff like that is, is you know, I, I'm all for getting more people in the industry because frankly, the less work for me to do, the, the happier I am. Um, but, you know, I mean, there, there definitely is, you know, again, I, you know, there's so much work going and, and there's so many people. Um, so, so I come at it more from a mentoring point of view, you know, I, I mentor people, I, I try and help people where I can and, and, and get people involved. And, and no offence to anger, so I, I, I tend to try and avoid recruiters, because again, it's not, it's not something I'm looking for. You know, no, it's, no, no. It's, cool. it's of no use to me personally. Yeah. But it's, it's nice to see people doing it well, because I mean, that's the other thing, of course, you know, you, you hear so many stories, you know, horror stories of, of bad recruiters. Um, so like I say, it's nice to see people approaching it, you know, more professionally. Well, I think one of the things that I've noticed um, is that there's now a pretty heavy emphasis on the tech resume, you know, the little paragraph about me, um, followed by, you know, a highlight of some of the experience yeah, of how, it, how important is that, Angus? Um, so, uh, one thing that most agencies do when they get a resume, they will, will completely strip it and put it into a format like their company, their company's format. They, they, uh, they pull all the, 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 the sometimes the resume is terrible, we'll, we'll, we'll give people some advice, but we prefer to send a resume as it is because it is in the end of the day a, a, a personal reflection on 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 this this candidate's story um i've seen i've seen some amazing amazing resumes uh and i've seen some absolutely terrible resumes and the 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 the, the best resume is you know with, with, with like i think it's a nat and it has like ratings on it um they look really good and if you've got the experience to to the back of what you say you can do then then it, it looks really good um i'm not that uh bothered with various formats of resume as long as it communicates accurately what you what you have done in the past what you're doing currently and what you would like to do in the future um the problem comes in is when someone overstates their abilities um i i've got a fairly good eye now for someone that is going to be good at job X or job Y. Um, but I, I miss details sometimes. And, you know, then those people get through. And the, the problem is you can try um, pull the wool over from myself and Tonsa, you, you'll, you'll come right and you'll come right with many other recruiters. But at some point doing a technical screen or doing an onsite, uh, you're going to be found. Um, so it's, it's best to just be straightforward and honest. But um, 
the new style of tech resume is is very uh, easy on the eye. I, I, I quite like them, but it's it's you know, put your own flavor into it is what I would say. Yeah, cool. So Steve, I want to talk a little bit about it. You you brought up the the idea of conferences, encouraging people to go to conferences. Um, do you see a lot of active recruiting going on, or do you see a lot of networking opportunities? Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm forever saying, you know, it, it's not about what you know, it, it, it's all about networking. And I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a horribly antisocial, quiet person, so it's, it's hard work. Except that you run the lock picking table that everybody but, but, enjoys. But again, but that's a great excuse, you know, that, that, that is because I can, I can sit and explain things to people and it, it gives me an, an avenue to start talking to people and, and something to, you know, to engage about. Um, but yeah, let's say, I'm, again, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm involved in running local DEF CON groups, that sort of stuff. So, mm -hmm. so my one bit of advice for people is always, you know, get yourself involved in the community somehow, you know, be going along to a local group, you know, getting, getting you know, getting along to a, a bigger conference. Uh, but I mean, the other thing I, I you know, I will, will definitely encourage people is, is, you know, get involved in the organisation. I mean, you know, I've been, I've been helping run conferences for the best part of 20 years. And, and you know, I've, I've never done one where I thought, oh, we've got far too much help here. Like I could do with fewer people. Um, and I'm, again, the, the lock picking is, a, you know, it's, it's a, a case in point. I mean, again, you know, we, we we put an awful lot of effort. You know, we're there early setting up. We're, we're you know, we've got to transport all the stuff. We've got to run it all day. And, and often that means, you know, at events, you know, I might not see anything other than the inside of the lock picking room. So, so again, the more bodies I can get the help, you know, the more we can spread the work around. Um, and, and I've had some wonderful helpers. Yeah, you know, I, I could not have done. The number of events I've done this year without without the, the copious number of helpers, far too many to list in the time we've got left. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I, I thank each and every one of them. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, no, people people get involved, you know, help out, uh, attend, meet people, and, and you know, your, your your careers will grow from that. Um, yeah, yeah, let's say no, I, 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 it's it's been a tiring year. Um, you know, we we've done this year comparatively, you know, massively more than than, than years gone by. Um, and I think next year is, is only going to be busier. But, but again, if, if anybody's interested in, in you know, helping out with, with any, well, I can maybe not talk me about, but on the, on the lot picking side, you know, if you want to get involved and come and help, uh, I, I will definitely talk to you um, and take you up on it. Um, it's, yeah, it's worthwhile. You know, I, I get a lot out of it and, and I would encourage other people to, to get involved in a similar well, fashion. I certainly was blown away when you showed me the four uh, digit combination lock vulnerability where I could be into one of those in less than three seconds. Mm. So really, really interesting stuff. Angus, um, you've, you've obviously been doing this um, uh, recruiting now for, for three years. Are you finding that it's getting a little bit um, easier because companies are getting more informed or is it still really variable? Companies want, you know, a ridiculous skill set for a, a, a non, shall we say, London market price. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 so sporadic and random and varied. It's it's absolutely unreal, and uh, it it there's many factors into it. It has to do with culture and company. It has to do with how they hire, how they hand out titles. Um, th there's so many different variables in it. Um, the best work that I do, um, and this is advice I give to any internal recruiter that, that, that does work with agencies, like I said earlier, make sure you pick the right company to work with. And, and, and if they're a good company that you've chosen and you've, you know, you've been vetted and you've asked around about them, have an, uh, an open relationship with this, with this recruiter. Send back, send feedback, and and when when someone doesn't meet the cut, tell the people why they didn't meet the cut because that allows someone to improve themselves. And also, if you don't, which has happened before, it it creates a negative impression about us as an agency, and it creates an even worse impact for for the client. You know, on something like Glassdoor, but it's um maybe things will stabilize at some point, but things are still extremely sporadic. You know, we have some clients that. We work fast, they hire fast, everything goes well. And then with others, it's like pulling blood from stone. But, you know, with my current client, I'm, I'm quite happy and quite impressed. We have, we have a very small number of clients, but we work extremely well with them. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen. We're at the 1035, so we're at the wrap. 
Um, thank you for being part of BeerCom One. Um, urge everyone listening to donate. We are doing um, well, uh, but we are not in the gravy zone where all of a sudden uh, a thousand um, becomes two thousand. So, if you could find it in your hearts to uh, do some donations, uh, we would really appreciate it, gentlemen. Thank you again for uh, making the time for us this morning. Thanks, guys. Well, you're more than welcome. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you very much. It was an absolute pleasure. Get donating. Thank you.